In the last lesson, I showed how to save a tree view, the tree view outline file from the application that I've been creating in Delphi, how to save that and all its note objects, uh, the, the notes associated with each branch of the tree, onto, onto disk. Now, in this lesson, I'm going to explain how to reload that data. So I click File Open. You can see there's my tree view and the notes that were associated with the uh, nodes, the individual nodes, are loaded down into that, uh, that little note panel at the bottom. In essence, this procedure performs the same tasks as the saving routine, which I explained in the last lesson. But it does it in reverse. Instead of writing data to the stream with write buffer, it reads data from the stream with read buffer. Instead of assigning data from the node labels and then writing them to the stream, it reads data from the stream, then creates a node and writes the data into its label. Now, for this procedure to work correctly, the correct amount of data has to be read back from the stream and it must be read back in the correct order. The first thing the code does here, therefore, is to read back the integer value that I wrote at the head of the stream, indicating the number of nodes that were saved. And that was explained in the last lesson. Data can now be read from the stream from i equals 0 to num of nodes minus 1. The text and level of each node is read in. The length of the string field, sln, of the note object is then read in, and the string itself is constructed by reading back sln characters, the that number of characters, from the stream. Now, for neatness, this code has been put in, into its own method. That's read chars, and I can find that. And that's up here. OK, so you can see that's the method that actually reads in the characters. Let's go back to the code I was looking at. Now, having created a new note ob object named note and assigned the string s to the field txt, I'm now ready to create a new node and add it to the tree. Here, add node is the name of a separate method, which I've written earlier in the unit. And again, we can go and have a look at that. So find up here. So this is the add node uh, procedure that I wrote uh, earlier. Now the first argument to this uh, method, this procedure, uh, last node, that is the last tree node in the tree, which by which I mean the node that I created prior to this one. The next argument, node level, is the level of the current node, which was read from the stream. The third argument, LBL, is the label of the node. The last argument, note, is the note ob object. If the tree is currently empty, I add a new child node and associated note ob object. Otherwise, the code determines if the current node level is greater than the last node level. If so, it adds it as a child node indented beneath the last node. And this is all very straightforward. But what happens if the current node level is lower than the previous level? Level, And that'll be the case if the current node is outdented. Let me show you that in this tree view. So load up some data. So you can see um, if I, I could outdent this. So I've now outdented that node and you can see that um, it, it's outdented several levels to the left of the node above it. That was the node uh, that it was orig originally directly above it. Now it's been outdented back several uh, levels. So I've written a while loop to search backwards through the levels for the appropriate parent node. A parent node is the one which has the current node as its subnode. And the add object method takes care of adding both the label LBL and the object, that's the note, uh, at the same level as, as last node. Now, up to now, even though I've got a rich edit box down here that's capable of displaying different character styles, I've only been entering uh, plain text. Wouldn't it be great if I could just mark off some text and say, press Control B and get that set into bold, as I've done here, and other styles such as italic, underline or strike through? Well, that's what I'll look at in the next lesson. To learn programming in depth, Enroll in one of my courses or read one of my books. More information at bitwisebooks.com.